Okay, so we're live right now. Yep, we're live. So, anyways, welcome everyone to Bites with the Message Live. And I'm in my bedroom because last time I was in the living room, but apparently the dog was barking, and so <laughs> apparently I can't record or I can't you know because of the um, the noise and I'm also if you hear my fan my heater in the background it's because it's getting cold down here at Clarkston so um, so anyways uh, let's get started with uh, this is my bikes with this is my ministry. It's called Bikes with a Message, and I sell bikes for a low price, and I also fix up for a low price. Um, and five dollars is the labor, and then whatever the bike needs, that's the up. Like, I buy parts for the bikes, and uh, and so if you want to donate to my ministry. So I can buy parts or whatever for the bikes I'm fixing up. Or if you want to donate to my ministry bikes to be fixed up. Or if you need a fix up, I can hook you up for a low price. And uh, so you can contact me at Martin P. Anderson. My phone number is uh, 208. 669-0456 and my address is 1337 McCarroll Street, Clarkston, Washington 99403 and my email is martchildofjesus316 at gmail.com and so if you want to help me with my ministry by donating a bike or if you want to give to my ministry, I'm, I'm uh, willing to take donations. And where the donations go to is down to Mexico. And um, it's going down to Tijuana, Mexico. Um, and it's people that are in poverty uh, that are in Mexico and the rest of the money goes back into the ministry. So um, back into the bike ministry so I can buy parts. So uh, I sell my bikes on Facebook Marketplace. So I have one of them right now. It's a BMX uh, Huffy bike. And, um, and so if you're interested in to buying a bike, you could go on the for the my Facebook um, and you can see the the um, you can see the bike that I have on Facebook Marketplace. So, anyways, let's get started with prayer. And tonight we're gonna be talking about sin. Uh, well, we're coming to the where. Amnon and Tamar, which Tamar was raped by Amnon. So, um, so anyways, um, let's get started with prayer and uh, let's get going. Father God, thank you for your word. Thank you for your son, Jesus. Thank you, God, for all that you've done, Lord. I pray that you would be with us today and... Uh, Watch over us as we study your word. Speak to us, Lord. And I want to thank you for all that you've done, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. So, we're in um, second. Let's see. We're in uh, second Samuel 12, 1 through 31. And uh, let me see if I can turn down that that heater. Just a sec, guys. All right. 
So, anyways, we're in 2 Samuel 12, 1 through 31. And uh, we're heading into um, where David is being rebuked for his, um, I would guess, sexual uh, uh, relationship with uh, Bathsheba. And uh, so he's being rebuked by Nathan. And... Um, and so, so anyways, uh, if you want to uh, invite your friends, you're welcome to invite your friends. And um, yeah, let's get started. Uh, so verse one, and the Lord sent Nathan. So this is Nathan's name in the Hebrew. Let's see if it's going to go up. Yeah, here we go. Is it going to go? Or am I going to have troubles? Come on. Oh, this is not good. It's not coming up. Oh, here we go. So Nathan is, um, here's how they pronounce his name. His Psalms H5416, Nathan. 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 And his name means giver. A son of David by Bathsheba. So, his son is rebuking his father because of his, of his, um, <laughs> of his sexual acts with his mom because of taking Uriah. Because Uriah was the wife of Bathsheba. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> so, uh, that's that's uh, Nathan. And let me see if I can go back to study here. So, Nathan, let me see if I can get rid of that. So Nathan, uh, to David, came, he came to him and said to him, uh, there were two men in a city, or a certain city, the one rich and the other poor. So, um, so, let's see if I can. Sorry, guys. I hope you can see that. Uh, let me see. Hold up, guys. Uh, size. There we go. There's, there it is. Okay. Sorry, guys. <laughs> I'm, I wasn't ready. I, I'm sorry. So, um, let's see if I can bring it up. Mm, size. Up. I guess that's as far as it goes. Okay, so... Uh, to David, he came to him and said to him, there were two men in a certain city, the one rich and the other poor. <clears throat> um, uh, poor. Uh, the rich 
rich man had a very much many flocks and herds. So you can imagine what who the rich man is. It's David. Okay. But the poor man had nothing but one little ewe lamb, which he had brought, and he brought it up, and uh, it grew up with him and with his children. It used to eat of his morsel and drink from his cup. And lied in his arms, and it was like a daughter to him. So, um, what he's saying is, is David. He was over Uriah, and so now there was there they came a traveler. To the rich man, Nathaniel, the prophet, and he was unwilling to take one of his own flock or herd uh, to prepare for the guest who had come to him. But he took the poor man lamb and prepared it for the young or for the man who had come to him. Then David's anger was greatly kindred against the man. Talking about Nathaniel here. Um <clears throat> uh, as the Lord lives, the man who has done this deserves to die. This is what David said. Okay. And he should restore the lamb fourfold. Because he did this thing. And because he had no pity. Nathaniel said to David, You are the man. This says, Thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, I anointed you king over Israel, and I delivered you out of the hands of Saul. And I gave, gave you your master's house and your master's wives into your hands and gave you the house of Israel and of Judah. See, God gave all of that to, to David and... What did he do? He slept with Bathsheba. He wants some booty. And I gave you your master's house and your master's wives into your, into your arms and gave you the house of Israel and Judah. And if this were too much, little, I would add it add to you as much more. <laughs> you know what he did? Why have you despised the word of the Lord to do what is evil in his sight? You have struck down Uriah, so this is Uriah in Hebrew. Uh, 
Okay, come on, work. Okay, so this is Uriah. Strong's H223. Uriah. Uriah. Uriahu. So, Uriah or Yojara, it means Jehovah or Yahweh is my light, flame. Hittite uh, husband of Bathsheba. So, uh, that's, um, that's Uriah's name. Let me get back to the study here. Okay, so Uriah, uh, the Hittite with the sword. With, with the sword and have taken his wife to be your wife. And have killed him with the sword of the Amorites or Ammonites. Now, therefore, the sword shall never depart from your house. Because you have despised me. This is God talking. And have taken the wife of Uriah, the Hittite, to be your wife. Okay. Thus says the Lord, Behold, I will raise up evil against you out of your own, your house, your own house. And I will take your wives, Okay, this is God talking here to David. Your wives before your eyes and give them to your neighbors. <laughs> oh, snap. <clears throat> and he shall lie with your wives in the sight of the... Of Sight of this son, you for you did it secretly, but I will do this thing before all Israel. Okay, way back, um, uh, when God did that before all Israel is he was reminding Israel, if you do this, destruction is going to happen, okay? And this is God talking. <clears throat> uh, before this, uh, no, uh, before Israel, and before the sun, uh, verse 13, God, uh, David said to Nathan, I have sinned against the Lord. Then Nathan said to David, The Lord also has put away your sin. You shall not die. See, he confessed his sin. And so when you confess your sin, God will forgive. In the New Testament now, that's what Jesus did. Jesus, he forgave sin. And, um, and so, like, for example, let me go get my Bible here. Let me actually, I have my study Bible here. Um, okay. So, let me see if I can find that. 
that lame, lame person. Uh, okay, here we go. So, check this out. Okay, I just turned to this. Okay, in John 8, they went each to his own house. But Jesus went to the Mount of Olives early in the morning. Again, to the temple. All of the people came to him, and he sat down and taught them. The scribes and the Pharisees brought a woman. Okay, even though this is David here, okay, brought a woman who had been caught in adultery. Ah, oh, snap! I just turned to that. <laughs> um, and placed her, uh, placing her in the midst. They said to him, or yeah, they said to him, Teacher, this woman has been caught in the acts of the adultery. Just like David. Just like David. Uh, now, in the law of Moses, in the in the law, Moses commanded us to stone, stone such women. So, what do you say? This they said to test him. Now. To test, okay, that they might have some charge to bring against him. Jesus bent down and wrote, so he wrote with his finger on the ground. And they continued to ask him. He stood up and said to them, let him who is without sin among you be the first to throw a stone at her. See, uh, Jesus fulfilled the law and the prophets now. Okay, he knew this. So did the Pharisees and Sadducees. Okay. Um, let's see, Pharisees and Sadducees to test him that they might find some charge to bring against him. Jesus bent, bent down and wrote with his finger on the ground. And as they continued to ask him, he stood up and said to them, let him be who is without sin among you be the first to throw the first stone at her. And once, uh, and once more, he bent down and wrote on the ground. But he, but they heard it. Uh, but when they heard it. They went away one by one, uh, beginning with the elders, ones, uh, elder, one, older ones, and Jesus was left alone with the woman standing before him. David, he was standing before God and Nathan here. Okay, <laughs> Jesus stood up and said to her, Woman, where, where are they? Has no one condemned you? She said, No one, Lord. He recognized, she recognized that he was Lord. So did David. 
Um, Jesus stood up and said to her, Woman, where are you? Where are they? Has no one condemned you? She said, No one, Lord. And Jesus said, Neither do I condemn you. Or uh, go and fr go from from now on, sin no more. Okay, just like David now, just like David. Isn't that pretty cool? Okay, so we were... Okay, verse 11. Uh, Thus says the Lord, Behold, you, I will raise up evil against you out of the out of your house. And I will take your wives before your eyes. Okay, so in the Old Testament, they got harder than the New Testament. Okay. Uh, and I will take your wives before your eyes and give them to your neighbors. And he shall lie with your wives in the sight of of this of this sign for you did it secretly but i will do this before thing before all israel and before the sun david said to nathan this is david's confession here <clears throat> I have sinned against the Lord. And Nathan said to David, The Lord will also has put away your sin. What did we just read? And you shall not die. So, Proverbs uh, 15, 32 through 33. He who ignores discipline despises himself. But whoever heeds correction gains understanding. 33. Fear the Lord, the fear of the Lord is instruction of wisdom and humility comes before honor. So what David had to go through, he had to be put down a peg. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> so, um... So, 1 John 1, 9, For if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive, uh, give, forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So, unrighteousness means the state as one as they aren't to be and righteousness is the state as one that is a art uh, art to be second Samuel 12 14 through 31 nevertheless because by this deed you have uttered scorn the Lord uh, scorned the Lord. The child who is born to you shall die. See, David was caught into adultery. David knew the law of God. Okay. 
And you're like, wait a minute, that's a contradiction. What Jesus did. Well, do you realize when Jesus was on the earth, he was merciful. God in the Old Testament now is the same God. He was merciful to David, but there was consequences for his sin. Okay? So he showed mercy and wrath on the situation with um, David. Now, what Jesus did is he said, sin no more. I forgive you your sin, but don't sin no more. Okay? It's the same thing. Same thing what happened with the woman that was caught in adultery happened to David. See, there's no contra contradiction. Um, uh, shall die. Then Nathan, Nathan went to his house. So David, David's child died, and the Lord afflicted the child that Uriah's wife bore to David. See, Uriah was dead. Now, with David now, it was spiritual adultery. See, the one in the Old Testament, in the New Testament, with um, with the woman caught into into adultery, it was spiritual and physical. David broke God's law. That's why it was it was spiritual adultery. He killed. Thou shalt not kill. Or actually, thou shalt not murder. He murdered Uriah. He ordered Uriah to go to the front lines and die. But Uriah didn't know about it. That's why it's murder. Okay? So, with, um, with the woman caught in adultery she knew it was wrong but she maybe that's why she made her living well no actually no uh, that'd be prostitution but what I'm saying is the same thing happened to the woman happened to David It's all sin, but it's in the same thing. Okay. So, um, bore to David, and he became sick. David, therefore, sought God on behalf of the child. <clears throat> and David fasted. And went into in and laid all night on the ground. He didn't go on his bed. He didn't like, eh, who cares? He, he's gonna die, you know. He was he was pleading for God to save the child's life. But that was not in God's will. And people are like, well, why would the loving God do that to a child? Well, it's sin, you know? And that's what we're gonna look at tonight, is sin. And we're gonna look at where it comes from, we're gonna look at what it is, and uh, so,
And the elders of the house stood beside him to raise him from the ground. But he would not. He was like, I have sinned terribly against the Lord. Now, this woman caught in adultery, we don't know if she repented. Okay? Because it doesn't say. It does not say. But David now, he repented. He was like, ah, I shouldn't have done that. I shouldn't have murdered Uriah. Okay. So, um, uh, let's see, where, verse 17. And the elders of the house stood beside him to raise him from the ground, but he would not nor did he eat food with them. We're talking about sin here. On the seventh day, when uh, the, the child died, and the servants of David were afraid to tell him that the child was dead, for they did for they said behold while the child was yet alive <clears throat> we spoke to him and he did not listen to us how then can we say to him the uh, the child is dead. He may he may do himself uh, himself so some harm. So Romans six twenty three. For the wages of sin is death. But the free gift is internal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. See, what David did was against the Lord. Wages of sin is death. But the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. David, he didn't know Jesus. But today, if you ask people, who is Jesus? Well, or they would give you like, say, well, he was a good teacher. He was, you know, and then some of them would say, well, I don't really know him. I don't know anything about him. See? Because of their sin. Sin blinds us. So, um, this is where sin comes from. Genesis 3, 1 through 9. Now, the serpent was more crafty than any of the beasts of the field that the Lord God had made. He said to the woman, Did God actually say you shall not eat of the tree in the garden. So, uh, let me, oh, I forgot to plug in my computer. Ah, just like guys, I forgot to do this. Sorry guys, I'll be right back. I totally forgot to do this. Ah. All right, back on here. <laughs> All right, sorry guys. 
I was not prepared. <laughs> I am sorry. So, um, so the trees now, same thing with David now, he shouldn't have done this. Okay, so what happened to Adam and Eve is the same thing. So, did God actually say you shall not eat of the tree, plural, in the garden? And the woman said to the serpent, we may eat of the trees, or oh, it's like singular, and in plural is trees, which means a lot of trees around, around the, sing, the singular tree in the garden. But God said, you shall not eat of the fruit of the tree that is in the midst of the garden. David, don't touch Bathsheba. David, do not touch Uriah. Okay. But God said, you shall not eat of the fruit that, that, okay. But God said, you shall not eat of the fruit of the tree in the midst of the garden. Neither shall you touch it, lest you die. David's household died. He was pleading for God to to um, save his child. But the serpent said to the woman, you will not surely die. For God knows when you eat of, of it, your eyes will be open and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. So the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was a delight to the eyes and that the tree was to be desired to make one wise. She took of its fruit and ate, and she also gave some to her husband, who was with her, and he ate. Adam, get on that girl. Come on. God told you not to touch it. See, there's a lot of people that are be, being like that. They want to be their own God. And they're touching stuff that should not be touched. Like, for example, abortion. That shouldn't happen because it's murder. What happened to Uriah? He got murdered. <clears throat> Verse 7. Then the eyes of both were open. And they knew that they were naked and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves loincloths. And they heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden and the, uh, in the cool of the day. And the man and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God. 
who among the trees, so trees, there's a lot of trees around, of the garden, but the Lord God called to the man and said, Where are you? Where are you? <laughs> America, where are you? That's what God is talking through his people, his church. America, American church, where are you? Where are you spending your time? Where are you spending your money? Is it for God or is it for you? So I looked up the definition for um, sin, uh, and this is what it is. An, an offense against religious or moral law. What did David do? He did a immoral thing. He didn't more he didn't do a moral thing. He did an unmoral thing. He knew it. Matter of fact, the law was given at the time, actually before he David became king. So he knew it. He knew adultery. He knew killing was wrong. See, he knew it was wrong. It was spiritual adultery towards God. And an act that is or is felt to be highly uh, receptible. So is uh, it is sin to waste food. Even though, yeah, because you're you're wasting food, but an often serious shortcoming, fault, transgression of God, of, of the law of God. This is what no, no, uh, the Merriam-Webster's Dictionary says. Uh, a valid state of human uh, nature in which the self is entangled in, in trust, no, in, in deranged from God. Instaraged or yeah, something like that. So I got a video on sin on what what it is this is what it is let's see if i can get oh okay here we go huh. oh come on sin the answer will be found in the Bible. 1 John 3, 4 says, Everyone who practices sin also practices lawlessness. And sin is lawlessness. When the letter of the New Testament was being written to the early churches, there was no canonized Bible that we see today. There was no New Testament yet. The only book that the early church worked off of was the Old Testament. In the Old Testament was the law, the prophets, and the Psalms. The law that 1 John 3, 4 is referring to is the Mosaic Law. We'll be calling this part of the Bible the Torah. This is all that existed as a book for believers in the first century church. Torah is the law. Practicing lawlessness can also be referred to as rebellion, disobedience, going astray, works of iniquity, works of darkness, 
there's more, but you get my point. So it's easy to see that this is a serious crime to disobey God. Here is a law to use as an example. Exodus 20, 15 says, you shall not steal. Practicing this sin will make you a thief. How many times do you need to steal in order to be a thief? Once. God gave us rules and instructions to guide us and know what is moral in his eyes. The Torah is like a bullseye that we need to aim for. Thieves are sinners who practice loss of lawlessness. They are aware of the moral law and they openly and willfully choose to live lawlessly by disobeying God's law. You might be thinking, well then, we're all in trouble if it only takes one sin to be considered lawless. Well, that's when you need to realize that the only way to attain eternal life after this world is to put your trust in God by knowing that the punishment for our sin has been paid for on the cross by Yeshua, the one you call Jesus. Yeah. In return for saving us, he asks us not to practice a sinful lifestyle. To constantly meditate on his word, the Bible, and to obey it. To conclude, sin is the breaking of God's law found in the Torah, the Old Testament. We are all guilty at one time or another of sinning. This is why we need salvation through Yeshua, Jesus. In return, he asks us to practice obedience and restrain from lawlessness, obey his word, and turn from sin. Jesus said in John 14, 15, If you love me, keep my commandments. King Solomon, the wisest king in the Old Testament, said in Ecclesiastes 12, 13, The conclusion, when all has been heard, is fear God and keep his commandments, because this applies to every person. So put your trust in God, obey his word, and practice yep. sin no more. If you like my video and want to see more, subscribe and follow me on YouTube. Thanks. So that was um, about sin. Oops, come on. Sorry, guys. Get back. Oops. Sorry, guys. Back there. <laughs> All right. So that was on sin. I hope it didn't go all the way back. Oh, shoot. It did. Okay, so... Sorry, guys. I don't like this Google slide. <laughs> it's kind of hard to do. Um, okay, so back this way. Alright, so this is where we were at. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, um, so 1 Corinthians 15, 3 through uh, 4, and if you noticed in the, the video, this is what he said in the video, this is what Jesus said, she said, no, Lord, no one, Lord, so condemning. Jesus said, neither do I condemn you. Go, and from now on, sin no more. Okay, so in 1 Corinthians 15, 3 through 4, it says, um, <clears throat> for... I delivered you as of first importance. Uh, what I also received that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures that he was buried and uh, that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. So, 
uh, first, uh, second Samuel 12, uh, 19 through 31. But when David saw that his servant was whispering together, David understood that the child was dead. See, David didn't know. He knew what he, was, what he did wrong, or he knew what he did wrong, but he was hoping that God was going to save the child's life, okay? <clears throat> and David said to his servants, Is the child dead? They said, He is dead. Then David rose from the earth and washed and anointed himself and charged his, uh, changed his clothes and he went into the house of the Lord and worshipped. See, what Bathsheba did, not only he murdered Uriah, I bet you Bathsheba kept him from worshiping the Lord. I bet you anything. Uh, he then went to his own house and when he asked, they sat food before him and he ate. So he he knew what was things were wrong there. A lot of people on this earth even now know things are wrong. Okay? But they don't know how to get out of it or they don't know who even created this this earth. They don't. And see it's the responsibility of the church to tell people about Jesus and tell them that they can have salvation or else if we don't, like it says in, uh, I think it was uh, Jude, was in John, First John? No, it's in James. That's right. It's in James. And it says, if we know what to do and we don't do it, it's sin. Okay? And you could go look it up. Matter of fact, let's see. Let me see if I can find it. Let me see if I can find it here. John Third John, second John, first John. I know it's not very far. Peter. James, here we go. So let's see where is it at. Let's see here. 
I think it's in um, James here. Let's see. Mm. Um. Hmm. Maybe it's not it. Mm. Well, it's in the pistols. I'm, I'm, if you guys look it up, it's, it's, uh, if you know what to do and you don't do it, it's sin. I know it's in the Bible. I can't remember where it's at, but, um, see, I have a hard time with the scriptures, but anyways, um, in, 20 and he ate okay last part of 20 so 21 then the servant said to him what is this thing you have done you fasted and wept for the child of uh, uh, for the ch the child, well, uh, while he was alive, but when the child died, you rose and ate. David's like, I can't do anything about this, so I'm gonna go about this about my life. See. David, he couldn't do anything about it. This was a God thing. See, this was God punishing David for his actions towards Uriah. Okay. And um, he said, while the child was still alive, he uh, fasted and wept. For I said, I knew rather the Lord will be gracious to me that the child may live. Okay. But now he said, uh, he's, now he is dead. Why should I fast? Can I bring him back again? No. David was human. Now, if God chose to um, save the child, then yeah, David's prayer would have would have been worth. But since now, um, God chose not to save the child. To bring to bring David discipline. That's why God did it, because He can. Okay, and you people out there that don't have or don't have a father, or your father was not that good to you. God is a good daddy. He will discipline you. He will provide for you. He will, um, and that's only if he wills it. Okay. Now, God provided everything for me because I'm in his will. Okay. But I have to realize that I have to be disciplined. I went through a lot of discipline. Marty, don't get that. Marty, don't get that. Focus on me, and then all of them things be added. So what I've done in my life is I've focused on 
God. And yes, I have been provided for, but also I have, I have let go a lot of stuff for other people. You see, David could not bring that child back to life again. Shall I go to him, but he will not return to me? Verse 23. <clears throat> so Solomon now, David confronted his wife Bathsheba, or comforted his wife Bathsheba. And went into her and lied with her, which means he had sexual relations <clears throat> with his wife. And she bore him a son. And he, he called his name Samuel. Or not Samuel, but uh, Solomon. So this is Solomon now. Let's see. Back. Solomon. will work. Alright, now uh, this is Solomon's um, name in Hebrew. Come on. Strong's H 8010. Shalom. 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 And it means peace. Right here. See? Peace. Son of David by Bathsheba and the third king of Israel, author of Proverbs and Psalms. Or Song. Song, song of Song. Song of Songs. So, which is known by, as uh, the Songs of Solomon. Or the Song of Solomon. So, let me get back here. And the Lord, uh, yeah. and the Lord loved him and sent a message to a message uh, by Nathan the prophet <clears throat> and so he called his name jo Jodadiah so Jodadiah So Jodiah is Strong's H three thousand forty one Yadibya Yadibya and it means beloved of Jehovah name given to Solomon through Nathaniel the prophet so So um, I think I'm going to stop right here um, since we're into a nerd. Wait a minute. No, we still got some more. Um, sorry about that. Um, we'll go until 730. Uh, because of the Lord. Rabbath is captured. Now jo Joab fought against Rabbath uh, of the Amorites and 
took Royal City, the Royal City, and Joab sent messengers to David and said, Have I fought uh, against Rabbah? Moreover, then have taken, taken the the city of water. Now then, gather the rest of the people together in a camp against the city and take it. Last, the, I take the city and be I it be called by my name. So David gathered all the people together and went to Rabbah Rabba and fought against it and took it. So this is Rabbah. the capital city of the Ammonite people. It was positioned 40 miles northeast of Jerusalem, and it was a royal city, meaning the king of the Ammonites had his palace there. Rabbah is best known for the siege set against it by King David and his army commander, Joab. This was the time of David's great sin, his adultery with Bathsheba. During the siege of Rabbah, David had Bathsheba's husband, who was in the military, sent to the front lines of the battle. Here, he was killed. Despite David's actions, Israel still defeats Rabbah, and David takes the Ammonite king's crown right from his head. This defeat would have been no easy task. Rabbah was positioned physically high in an excellent defensive area and it was well fortified, even having an underground water supply. Today, there remains much of the city of David's time underground, still undiscovered, because during later periods in history, the city was renovated, it was rebuilt and updated. For me, references to people and places and countries within the prophets it really keeps me grounded and keeps me from getting too lost in the theology of the prophets, which is amazing, definitely. But when they mention different place names, it, 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 having the knowledge of their history and the history of their interaction with Israel and with Judah just adds a different dimension and a different level of understanding to the prophecies. So that's uh, about Rabbah. Uh, let's see if I can get back to the study here. So that was Rabbah. And, um, and he took the crown of the king, uh, of their king, from his head and weighted of it was a talent of gold. I was trying to look up online on a talent of gold and I really couldn't find anything on, on a talent. So, um, oh, darn. Sorry guys, my tablet when I unplugged it. <laughs> Sorry guys. Let me get back here. It was uh, after Rabbah. I don't really like this. Okay, so on 30 and he took the crown of their king from 
Oh no. Sorry guys. There we go. Ah! Sorry about that, guys. I was there was a little bit of trouble. My my um, GoPro went off. <laughs> so, uh, anyways, um, and in it was a precious stone, and it was placed on David's head, and he brought. Uh, out the spoil to the city in very great amount. So verse 31, and he brought out the people who were in it and sat them be sent sat them to labor with uh, with saws and I and iron picks, and iron axes, and made them toil at the brook kiln. And thus he did to all the cities of, of the Amorites. Then David and all the people returned to Jerusalem, so, um, so anyways, we're going to quit right here on, uh, thir on 13. So, um, we're going to quit right here on 13 and, um, because it's almost 730. Um, but, uh, anyways. Uh, that's where sin came from, and uh, so keep in mind as you watch this video, or if you um, have been watching on live, this is what sin does to a person. And see that that verse, that passage on the woman caught in the adultery. What ha that's what happened to David. I turned to that. I had no idea that I was going to be flipped into that. So just keep in mind, God was controlling this whole thing. So, um, so just keep in mind. And um, so anyways, let's close up in prayer. And uh, we'll uh, pick up next week here at uh 13 1 through 39 and so father god thank you for your word thank you for your son jesus thank you for your loving kindness lord i just pray that you would be with us today or this be with us this rest of this week and i pray that you would uh bring bring us back and so we can read your word and study it uh, next uh, Sunday and uh, I pray Lord that you would uh, be with me for this this week and uh, guide me and protect me Lord thank you God for this time in Jesus name amen so if you need a bike I will I will be available uh, for this time of Christmas or well Actually, Halloween is tomorrow. Thanksgiving is in a month. And then we got Christmas. So if you guys want to get a bike for Christmas for one of your kids or whatever, I can hook you up for a very, very, very low price. Cheaper than any of the bike shops, I can tell you that much. But... Um, I'm doing this because of the glory of God. I want to glorify my Father. And so, if you want to help me with my ministry, 
you can give or whatever. And so uh, I want to take, I want to say bye for now and take a ride with Jesus. See ya. Bye.